Walter Rathenau, the 29th of September 1867 to the 24th of June 1922, was a Jewish statesman who served as German foreign minister during the Weimar Republic. Rathenau initiated the Treaty of Rapallo, which removed major obstacles to trading with Soviet Russia. Although Russia was already aiding Germany's secret rearmament program, right-wing nationalist groups branded Rathenau a revolutionary, when he was in fact a moderate liberal who openly condemned Soviet methods. They also resented his background as a successful Jewish businessman. Two months after signing the treaty, he was assassinated in Berlin by the right-wing terrorist group Organization Consul. Some members of the public viewed Rathenau as a democratic martyr until the Nazis banned all commemorations of him. Early life Rathenau was born in Berlin. His parents were Emil Rathenau and Matilda Nachmann. His father was a prominent Jewish businessman and founder of the Allgemeine Elektrizitätsgesellschaft, an electrical engineering company. He studied physics, chemistry, and philosophy in Berlin and Strasbourg, and received a doctorate in physics in 1889 after studying under August Kunt. His German Jewish heritage and his assimilated wealth were both factors in establishing his deeply divisive reputation in German politics at a time of antisemitism among Gentiles. He summed up his feelings about growing up in Germany I am a German of Jewish origin. My people are the German people, my home is Germany, my faith is German faith, which stands above all denominations. He worked as a technical engineer in a Swiss aluminium factory, and then as a manager in a small electrochemical works in Bitterfeld where he conducted experiments in electrolysis. He returned to Berlin and joined the AEG board in 1899, becoming a leading industrialist in the late German Empire and early Weimar Republic periods. In 1903 his younger and much more entrepreneurial brother Eric Rathenau died. Broken-hearted his father had to be content with Walther's help instead. Walther Rathenau was a highly successful industrialist, in a decade he set up power stations in Manchester England, Buenos Aires Argentina, and Baku Northern Persia, later run by the Soviet Union. AEG acquired ownership of a streetcar company in Madrid, and in East Africa he purchased an English firm. In total he was involved with 84 companies worldwide. AEG was particularly celebrated for vertical integration methods and a strong emphasis on supply chain management. Rathenau developed an expertise in business restructuring, turning companies around. Superb organizational capabilities made his company very rich, but it also produced the standards for new chemical development, such as acetone in Manchester. He made large profits from commercial lending on an industrial scale, which were reinvested in capital and assets. Topic. Supply chains for the World War An experienced journalist, Rathenau published in Berliner Tageblatt an article accusing his own country of manipulating politics in Vienna. As the dual monarchy's relations with Russia drifted, the paper described a secret conspiracy at work in Moltke's war department in which he had taken part. During World War I his opinions hardened. He held senior posts in the raw materials department of the war ministry and became chairman of AEG upon his father's death in 1915. Rathenau played a key role in convincing the War Ministry to set up the War Raw Materials Department KRA, of which he was put in charge from August 1914 to March 1915 and established the fundamental policies and procedures. His senior staff were on loan from industry. KRA focused on raw materials threatened by the British blockade, as well as supplies from occupied Belgium and France. It set prices and regulated the distribution to vital war industries. It began the development of Ersatzkaiserdom raw materials, developing supply chains to bring peace and for regime change within Germany. KRA suffered many inefficiencies caused by the complexity and selfishness encountered from commerce, industry, and the government itself. Topic. Personal character Rathenau wrote about personal and social responsibility to the community at a time when solidarity was required to keep the peace. His characteristics were courage, vision, imagination, tenacity and creativity, yet he insisted technology come to the aid of manual laborers. So one of the joys of work included, pleasure from profit, to elevate society. According to one biographer he is said to have identified a sense of inferiority with his Jewishness, writing that he, 
realized completely for the first time that he had come into this world as a second-class citizen and that no amount of ability and merit could ever free him from this condition. One heavy criticism which he bore stoically was the implication that Jews could never put Germany first, the idea that the Jews were our misfortune, as the German nationalist historian Heinrich Treitschke wrote, led to the proliferation from 1880s of anti-Semitic parties. There were no Jewish officers in the whole Prussian army, the ruling class in the imperial officer corps was both blatantly and latently anti-Semitic, eventually supporting the Nazis' anti-Semitic policies, Rathenau wanted to stand on a platform for one world order for a transcendental peace that banished anarchy. After Versailles 1919, he founded a League for Industry, an offshoot of internationalism that blamed German defeat on a lack of industrial readiness. He wished to exculpate the blame for Germany's war guilt articulated through an acquaintance with Colonel House. Topic: <inaudible> Post-war statesman. Rathenau was a moderate liberal in politics, and after World War I, he was one of the founders of the German Democratic Party (DDP), but he moved to the left in the advent of post-war chaos. Passionate about rights of social equality, he rejected state ownership of industry and instead advocated greater worker participation in the management of companies. His ideas were influential in post-war governments. He was put forward as a socialist candidate for first president, but on standing in the Reichstag was dismissed amid rows and shrieks of laughter, which visibly upset the man. Ebert's election by the left failed to heal the deep rifts and social divisions in German society that occurred throughout the Weimar. Rathenau advised that a small town in central Germany was the wrong place for the capital and seat of government. But his own adequacy was underappreciated, immediately giving rise to extreme right-wing organizations within months of the communist-inspired Spartacist revolt. The product of a state in which for centuries no one has ruled who was not a member of, or a convert to military feudalism. He told the Reichstag, at once deploring the foundation of the Fatherland Party in 1917. In 1918 he established the ZAG living through his philosophy of Deutsche Gemeinwirtschaft a collective economic community. Rathenau was a natural central planner with an eye for economic detail. He encouraged free traders, was honestly unrepentant believing in the efficacy of preparedness and directional efficiency. AEG was influential. His colleague Richard von Mohlendorf was appointed as Under Secretary of the Reich Economy Office. For a time in July 1919, they worked closely for Weimar with Republican Rudolf Wissel. But Hindenburg's technocratic rational economic program was borrowed, while Rathenau, being democratic, warned against short termism. Berlin's March Days was a consequence of the internal struggle between finance and economic ministries. On 20 February 1919 he proposed workers' councils, which had already been explained in his writings. The plan for a socialist League of Nations was overtly pro-union mocked as the Paris League. A throwback to the Second Communist International, they challenged openly for democratic ideas. But a rapprochement with Soviet Union was inspired by Rathenau, it tried to prevent an expansive Greater Germany. Rathenau was appointed Minister of Reconstruction and in May 1921 held a second meetings with Lloyd George and the Reparations Committee. He established good relations with Aristide Bryant who praised, "...a strong, healthy, booming Germany." The era of Erfüllungspolitik was high, altruistic self-confidence, he shared a pre-war fascination for the Hegelian complex for a corporate Germany chastised by a reverence to a supreme being. He was wary of allied decadence, complacent, corrosive of an innocent romanticism expanded into mysticism. His ideas were challenged as objectively impossible. Weimar lacked clarity and leadership, while Rathenau was deterministic, and robust over the details. A levy en masse would be part of this utilitarianism that bestrode his mentioned philosophies. This contradistinction about an unraveled Versailles which was incompatible with fulfillment and the role of reconstruction. Bravely Rathenau held out against the partition of Poland, despite Erzberger's assassination, and threats for extreme national Bolshevists when he joined Joseph Wirth's government after Cannes on 31 January 1922, there was a horrible fear that his days were numbered. In 1922 he became foreign minister, on which occasion he sought Lily Deutsche Solace, his mother's comfort, and the company of a pistol for protection. Writing before the Genoa conference that concern for his personal safety was prescient of a foreboding for his own death. 
the insistence that Germany should fulfill its obligations under the Treaty of Versailles, but work for a revision of its terms, infuriated extreme German nationalists. He also angered such extremists by negotiating on the 22 January 1922 Treaty of Rapallo with the Soviet Union, although the treaty implicitly recognized secret German-Soviet collaboration begun in 1921 that provided for the rearmament of Germany, including German-owned aircraft manufacturing in Russian territory. The leaders of the still obscure National Socialist German Workers' Party and other extremist groups falsely claimed he was part of a Jewish communist conspiracy. Despite the fact that he was a liberal German nationalist who had bolstered the country's recent war effort, the British politician Robert Boothby wrote of him, He was something that only a German Jew could simultaneously be a prophet, a philosopher, a mystic, a writer, a statesman, an industrial magnate of the highest and greatest order, and the pioneer of what has become known as industrial rationalization. Despite his desire for economic and political cooperation between Germany and the Soviet Union, Rathenau remained skeptical of the methods of the Soviets. We cannot use Russia's methods, as they only and at best prove that the economy of an agrarian nation can be leveled to the ground. Russia's thoughts are not our thoughts. They are, as it is in the spirit of the Russian city intelligentsia, unphilosophical, and highly dialectic, they are passionate logic based on unverified suppositions. They assume that a single good, the destruction of the capitalist class, weighs more than all other goods, and that poverty, dictatorship, terror and the fall of civilization must be accepted to secure this one good. Ten million people must die to free ten million people from the bourgeoisie is regarded as a harsh but necessary consequence. The Russian idea is compulsory happiness, in the same sense and with the same logic as the compulsory introduction of Christianity and the Inquisition. The question of war reparations vexed Rathenau. Art. 231 imposed repayments that crippled Germany until 1990. Expunging war guilt converting it into financial and economic responsibility was critical to relations with the Big Four. Yet Rathenau was unable to convince Germans of its applicability. He talked in his apocalyptic way about society, politics and the problems of responsibility. He was persuasive, the Entente would recognize, he urged, that Germany had to be capable of discharging its obligations. Topic. Philosophy of imagery Topic. Philosopher for socialism Although he never married, Rathenau did fall in love with Francisca Elizabeth Lilly. Deutsch, nay Kahn, a society beauty and the wife of his father's business partner Felix Deutsch. She was the daughter of Bernhard and Emma Kahn nay Eberstadt of Mannheim and the sister of, among others, composer Richard Kahn and Wall Street financier Otto Kahn. He related in a notebook titled Breverium Mysticum Finding Revealed Love in the Sight of a Soaring Eagle, a soulful dedication on a sojourn in the Harz Mountains. Walther was highly literate and intelligent, wrote several books with deep philosophical overtones. In Zur Kritik der Zeit contemporary human conditioning was critically examined on a sociological basis found in a life of business. This put together another critique into an intellectual context of mind over matter, social wisdom and corporate discipline as a framework in the socialistic sciences, Zur Mechanik des Geists. Rathenau moved ever closer to a rejection of religion, embracing the power of science. He tried to bring people's attention to what changes would be required for a futuristic romantic movement in von Kommenden Dingen to openly challenge the living of lives. Mechanistics rejected the central feature of Malthusian thoughts on human progress motivated by population growth. His focus was the importance of technology, rather than abstinence for standardization, specialization and abstraction with positive approbation. The corollary for Rathenau of information gathering was an exponential explosive growth in data that would enrich globalization. Rathenau delineated his arguments by dividing men into classifications. Mummenschen and Furchtmenschen outlined the problems of mass migration across Europe which had resonance with the past. But he saw real significance for Zweckmenschen as utilitarian cunning to set the men of fear in motion. The philosophy amounted to social Darwinism but there was an unaccredited presumption of Delphic adoration for the Greek Parnassus. The theories of mechanization argued that competition could not go on forever as it died in love. Intellectual perorations were reached in pronouncements preceding a great vision for the future of German business. 
He cannot be directly held responsible for the mechanization of the Panzer's movement, for his social idealism was grounded in Rousseau's Great Enlightenment path. Pure mechanization would have to transmogrify psychological mutation, risk tragedy, and plunging into the abyss. Rathenau was assimilated by a love for St. Francis Assisi, a message of service dedicated to the community that restricted his ambitions. A modified or applied mysticism Rathenau's idea always expressed work as a joy. Alike to Schopenhauer he rejected materialism, recognized its pitfalls, using a deep knowledge of technology to simultaneously warn of its dangers. This distinction with Soviet working methods of dialectical materialism were unwelcome in Germany seeking to rearm. Thus he rallied ideas for management and control as head of raw materials and efficacy of science. Topic. Assassination and aftermath The German foreign secretary was increasingly concerned for his own safety. Poincare and the French did not appear at the Genoa conference on the 10th of April 1922. The Russians went 20 miles down the coast to sign a deal with Germany. The idea for a consortium in an economic Europe was already dead. On the other hand, rapprochement with the Soviets held risks as Lloyd George had gone behind Germany's back with private meetings. At Portofino a Soviet-German accord was signed in order to stimulate the moral and spiritual rejuvenation of industry. On 24 June 1922, two months after the signing of the Treaty of Rapallo which renounced German territorial claims from World War I, Rathenau was assassinated. On this Saturday morning, Rathenau had himself chauffeured from his house in Berlin Grunewald to the Foreign Office in Wilhelmstrasse. During the trip, his nag convertible was passed by a Mercedes touring car with Ernst Werner Tachau behind the wheel and Erwin Kern and Hermann Fischer on the back seats. Kern opened fire with a MP-18 submachine gun at close range, killing Rathenau almost instantly, while Fischer threw a hand grenade into the car before Tachau quickly drove them away. Also involved in the plot were Teko's younger brother Hans Gerd Tachau, future writer Ernst von Solomon, and Willy Gunther aided and abetted by seven others, some of them schoolboys. All conspirators were members of the ultra-nationalist secret organization Consul OC. A memorial stone in the Königsallee in Grunewald marks the scene of the crime. Rathenau's assassination was but one in a series of terrorist attacks by organization Consul. Most notable among them had been the assassination of former finance minister Matthias Erzberger in August 1921. While Fischer and Kern prepared their plot, former Chancellor Philip Scheidman barely survived an attempt on his life by organization consul assassins on 4 June 1922. Historian Martin Sabrau points to Hermann Erhardt, the undisputed leader of the organization consul, as the one who ordered the murders. Erhardt and his men believed that Rathenau's death would bring down the government and prompt the left to act against the Weimar Republic, thereby provoking civil war, in which the organization consul would be called on for help by the Reichswehr. After an anticipated victory Erhardt hoped to establish an authoritarian regime or a military dictatorship. In order not to be completely delegitimized by the murder of Rathenau, Erhardt carefully saw to it that no connections between him and the assassins could be detected. Although Fischer and Kern connected with the Berlin chapter of the organization Consul to use its resources, they mainly acted on their own in planning and carrying out the assassination. The terrorists' aims were not achieved, however, and civil war did not come. Instead, millions of Germans gathered on the streets to express their grief and to demonstrate against counter-revolutionary terrorism. When the news of Rathenau's death became known in the Reichstag, the session turned into turmoil. DNVP politician Karl Helferich in particular became the target of attacks, because he had just recently uttered a vitriolic attack upon Rathenau. During the official memorial ceremony the next day, Chancellor Joseph Wirth from the Centre Party held a speech soon to be famous, in which, while pointing to the right side of the parliamentary floor, he used a well-known formula of Philip Scheidman, There is the enemy, and there is no doubt about it, this enemy is on the right. The crime itself was soon cleared up. Willy Gunther had bragged about his participation in public. After his arrest on 26 June, he confessed to the crime without holding anything back. Hans Gerd Tachau was arrested the following day, Ernst Werner Tachau, who was visiting his uncle, three days later. Fischer and Kern, however, remained on the loose. 
After a daring flight, which kept Germany in suspense for more than two weeks, they were finally spotted at Salic Castle in Thuringia, whose owner was himself a secret member of the organization consul. On 17 July, they were confronted by two police detectives. While waiting for reinforcements during the standoff, one of the detectives fired at a window, unknowingly killing Kern by a bullet in the head. Fischer then took his own life. When the crime was brought to court in October 1922, Ernst Werner Tachau was the only defendant charged with murder. Twelve more defendants were arraigned on various charges, among them Hans Gerd Tachau and Ernst von Solomon, who had spied out Rathenau's habits and kept up contact with the organization consul, as well as the commander of the organization consul in western Germany, Karl Tillessen, a brother of Erzberger's assassin Heinrich Tillessen, and his adjutant Hartmut Plaus. The prosecution left aside the political implications of the plot, but focused upon the issue of antisemitism. Ahead of his assassination, Rathenau had indeed been the frequent target of vicious antisemitic attacks, and the assassins had also been members of the violently antisemitic Deutschvokischer Schutz und Trutzmann. Kern had, according to Ernst Werner Tachau, argued that Rathenau had to be murdered, because he had intimate relations with Bolshevik Russia, so that he had even married off his sister to the communist Karl Roddick, a complete fabrication, and that Rathenau himself had confessed to be one of the 300 elders of Zion, as described in the notorious anti-Semitic forgery The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. But the defendants vigorously denied that they had killed Rathenau because he was Jewish. Neither was the prosecution able to fully uncover the involvement of the organization consul in the plot. Thus Tillesson and Plaus were only convicted of non-notification of a crime and sentenced to three and two years in prison, respectively. Solomon received five years imprisonment for accessory to murder. Ernst Werner Tachau narrowly escaped the death penalty, because in a last-minute confession he managed to convince the court that he had only acted under the threat of death by Kern. Instead he was sentenced to 15 years in prison for accessory to murder. Initially, the reactions to Rathenau's assassination strengthened the Weimar Republic. The most notable reaction was the enactment of the Republikschutzgesetz law for the defense of the Republic, which took effect on of July 1922. As long as the Weimar Republic existed, the date 24 June remained a day of public commemorations. In public memory, Rathenau's death increasingly appeared to be a martyr-like sacrifice for democracy. The situation changed with the Nazi seizure of power in 1933. The Nazis systematically wiped out public commemoration of Rathenau by destroying monuments to him, closing the Walther Rathenau Museum in his former mansion, and renaming streets and schools dedicated to him. Instead, a memorial plate to Kern and Fischer was solemnly unveiled at Salic Castle in July 1933 and in October 1933, a monument was erected on the assassin's grave. Topic. Fictional portrayal Rathenau is generally acknowledged to be, in part, the basis for the German noble and industrialist Paul Arnheim, a character in Robert Musel's novel The Man Without Qualities. Rathenau also appears as the ghostly subject of a Nazi séance in a famous scene in Thomas Pynchon's Gravity's Rainbow. In 2017, the events and aftermath of Rathenau's assassination were depicted in the first episode of the National Geographic series Genius. Works <laughs> 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 Zur Mechanik des Geistes 1913. Von Kommenden Dingen 1917. Vom Aktiewissen. Eine geschäftliche Betrachtung 1917. And Deutschland's Jugend 1918. Die Neue Gesellschaft 1919. The New Society translated by Arthur Wyndham, 1921. New York, Harcourt, Brace and Co. Der Neue Stadt 1919. Der Kaiser 1919 Critic der Dreyfusion Revolution 1919 Was Word Worden 1920 a utopian novel Jessamel T Schriften 6 volumes Jessamel T Redden 1924 Brief 1926 2 volumes Neue Brief 1927 Politisch Brief 1929 Topic See also Contributions to liberal theory 
1920s Berlin Liberalism Topic Notes Topic References Topic References Topic Secondary Sources Berger, Stefan, Inventing the Nation, Germany London, Hodder, 2004. Dallas, Gregor, 2000, 1918, War and Peace. London, John Murray. Felix, David. Walther Rathenau and the Weimar Republic, Johns Hopkins Up, 1971. Gilbert, Sir Martin, First World's War, London, 1971. Henderson, W.O. Walther Rathenau, A Pioneer of the Planned Economy. Economic History Review 1951 4 No. 1 pp. 98-108 in JSTOR Himmer, Robert. Rathenau, Russia, and Rapallo. Central European History 1976 9 No. 2 pp. 146-183 in JSTOR Kalman, Eric C. Walther Rathenau and German Foreign Policy, Thoughts and Actions. Journal of Modern History 1952-24 No. 2 pp. 127-142 in JSTOR Poix, Robert A. Walther Rathenau's Jewish Quandary. Leo Back Institute Year Book 1968, Vol. 13, pp. 120-131. Sabrau, Martin 1994, Der Rathenomord. Reconstruction einer Verschwörung gegen die Republik von Weimar in German, Munich, Oldenburg, ISBN 978-3-486-64569-9, retrieved 27 July 2012. Strawn, Hugh, The First World War, Volume 1, To Arms, 2001, pp 1014-49 on Rathenau and KRA in the war. Volkov, Shulamit. Walter Rathenau, Weimar's Fallen Statesman, Yale University Press, 2012, 240 pages, a scholarly biography. Whaler, Hans Ulrich, The German Empire 1871-1918 Lemington, Berg, 1985. Williamson, D.G. Walter Rathenau and he K.R.A. August 1914 to March 1915. Zeitschrift für Unternehmengeschichte 1978, Issue 11, pp. 118-136. Primary sources Vossich Zeitung, a newspaper Tagebüsch 1907-22 Dusseldorf, 1967 Harry Kessler, Walther Rathenau, New York 1969 Count Harry Kessler, Berlin in Lights, The Diaries of Count Harry Kessler 1918-1937 Grove Press, New York, 1999. W. Rathenau, Die Mechanisierung der Welt FR, Paris 1972 W. Rathenau, Schriften und Redden Frankfurt am Main 1964 W. Rathenau, The Sacrifice to the Humanities 1913 Walter Rathenau, industrialist, banker, intellectual, and politician, Notes and Diaries 1907-1922. Hartmut P. von Strandmann, ed., Hilary von Strandmann, translator. Clarendon Press, 528 pages, in English. October 1985. ISBN 978-0-19-822506-5, hardcover. Topic. External links. Walther Rathenau Gesellschaft e. v. in German Works by Walther Rathenau at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Walther Rathenau at Internet Archive Works by Walther Rathenau at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks. Speech by German President Friedrich Ebert at Rathenau's Burial in German Newspaper clippings about Walther Rathenau in the 20th Century Press Archives of the German National Library of Economics ZBW.